You have so much potential. I hope you live. Trust me, you're gonna have me done. It's huge, it's fantastical. It's unlike anything else that's out there. It's been called the greatest science fiction novel of all time. And is at its heart really a coming of age story, not just for Paul Atreides, but for humanity. I read the novel when I was younger, it had a huge impact on me. If there's anybody out there who could do it, it's Denis Villeneuve. Welcome to one of the most exciting interviews of my career. Timothy Chalamet, Rebecca Ferguson, and Oscar Isaac. Josh Brolin, Zendaya, Sharon Duncan Brewster, Jason Momoa, Javier Bardem, and Denis Villeneuve. I've been incredibly excited uh, about this movie coming out. I've gobbled up every bit of released set art, character design, casting reveals, photography as the cast in character, and everything I've seen as a longtime fan. It looks absolutely perfect. I've been so excited that I actually went back and I've been rereading the book. I'm sort of at a fever pitch of my Dune enthusiasm right now. And I hadn't read it since I was 19 years old. And I can't believe how much of it has stuck with me since then. I first read it when I was not that much older than Paul Atreides. And of course, I was Paul Atreides. And I believed that fear was the mind killer. And I would let the fear pass through me. And I would, when the fear passed through, I would watch its path. And when the fear was gone, only I would remain. But I didn't even realize it till just now I went back and read how influential it was. Please welcome my first two guests, Dune's director and star, Denis Villeneuve and Timothy Chalamet. Hi, guys. Hello, hello, how are you? Hi, Stephen, thank you for having us. For each of you, what was your first encounter with the story. Denis, let's start with you. Like you, I was the age of Paul Atreides. I was 15 years old and I was grabbed right at the beginning of the first pages and I read the whole series and I became a Dune fan. I became obsessed by it. Timothy, how about you? When did you first encounter the story of Dune? Well, I'd love to say I came to it in my youth as well because I can see uh, for you, Stephen, and also <laughs> Denis as well and other people that have worked on this project now, how formative it was in their youth. Uh, but the truth is, I. I came to it following Denis' career and seeing the article on IndieWire or whatever it was at the time that he'd become attached to direct it. Well, I have good news for you, uh, Timothy. You still have an opportunity to encounter it in your youth. <laughs> <laughs> what can you tell us about Paul Atreides? Who is he? Paul Atreides is a young man who's facing extraordinary circumstance, uh, extraordinary struggles, trying to navigate it with integrity, with honor, with uh, faith in the tradition of House Atreides and of Duke Leto, his father. Paul sees that there's the potential that he is on a path greater than he understood, that perhaps he's not a simply a regular man. Did he, what was it about Timothy Chalamet that you said that would be the perfect person to realize this role? Timothy has, uh, has many qualities among them. Something there's a deep, deep intelligence in the eyes, and he has a whole soul. I have the impression when you talk with Timothy that uh, he lives many lives, and it's something that uh, really touched me. And at the same time, he looks so young on camera. So that contrast of having someone that uh, uh, seems to have a lot of experience, uh, and in the same time being like uh, uh, in the middle of his teenage years, is Paul Atreides. Timothy. One of Paul's incredible traits from when I read from the book is his adaptability, his ability to listen and to perceive yeah. the essential moment. Is that anything like acting to you? Yeah, you feel the environment, specifically for the role of Paul. And thank you to Denis. I don't know the other actors could speak to it better than I could, especially Josh, who worked on Sicario with Denis. But I think I did two scenes on a green screen. I think it's literally two scenes I did on a green screen. And uh, besides that, everything else was practical. Well, Denis, what do those relocations mean for you to be in those spaces where you can make discovery? For me, one condition I had to shoot the movie was that I wanted to shoot in the real desert. My argument was that they didn't shoot Jaws in a swimming pool. The title is Dune, we needed to be in the real environment so we will be inspired by uh, the infinity. When you're shooting in the desert in Jordan, the spirituality of the location, and I I'll ruin it with my words so I won't even try, but you're really in it. That's why at the very cards it's a tragedy about a family going into a new environment. Denis, this is a sweeping story in so many ways. 
but one of the important things that you have to understand is the dynamics between House Atreides and House Harkonnen. I will say that my secret weapon uh, for that was uh, Stellan Skarsgård. After uh, five seconds on screen, people will understand right away what is his, his um, position regarding the Atreides and uh, what is the difference of moral values between the Atreides and the Harkonnens. Timothy, let's bring out the man and the woman who play your parents, Duke Leto Atreides and the Lady Jessica. Please welcome Oscar Isaac and Rebecca Ferguson. Hi. Hey, Stephen. Tell me and, and the audience about Duke Leto Atreides. What do we need to know? He's the father and he's human. I think that's the biggest thing. And uh, under incredible pressure to save his family, save his house, but to adapt to this new existential threat situation which is moving to this strange planet. Rebecca, rereading the book uh, right now, I am struck by how much of the story, uh, the backstory and the action of the story is actually driven by the decisions that Lady Jessica makes. I'm very impressed with the fact that you, Stephen, actually read the book again. But it's a little applause to Denny. He highlighted this from the book in the film, that her decisions basically create fracture and disrupts everything. Oscar, what's it like to be there on these grand uh, sets, sort of unprecedented in their scale? Well, I'll just say that, you know, no set piece, no X-Wing, no Millennium Falcon could compare to the sheer scale of Josh Brolin's head. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was just um it was a th it was massive both literally and figuratively and um and just the it really made me feel like I was in an alien planet. Those voices are familiar to all of you out there. So let, let, let's bring in some more of the Dune cast. Jason Momoa, Javier Bardem, and Josh Brolin. Duncan Idaho, Stilgar, and Gurney Halleck. Hello, gentlemen. And I use that term loosely. <laughs> Hello. This is for all of you. How do each of your characters fit into the world of Arrakis and House Atreides? Let's start with you, Jason. Who are you? I'm Duncan Idaho. I'm basically the greatest fighter in the <laughs> world, galaxy for that matter. <laughs> No, I kind of look at myself as uh, the servant to the Atreides. Uh, you know, he's the samurai, he's the front line. He's trusted by the Duke to be sent into Arrakis and meet Stilgar and combine two worlds together. Um, and at the root of it, he just would um, do anything to protect Paul and the family of Atreides and um, looks up to all these guys. Javier, tell us who Stilgar is. Well, Stilgar is the head chief of the people that live deep in the desert of the planet Arrakis, which is also known as Dune. He is a leader, he is a fighter, he has a lot of ethics and morals, and he is taken by the message that the Messiah, Paul Atreides, is bringing with him. Hey, Josh, you're Gurney Halleck. Who is he? He's a musician. Oh. <laughs> do you play the Balisset in the movie? I do. I've been playing the Balisset, actually, since I was about seven or eight years old, so... <laughs> oh, which wow. is why I was hired <laughs> for this. You're a prodigy. I'm the only person who plays the Balisset. <laughs> uh, Gurney is the war master. He's also kind of a, a parent of sorts, and he's taken a real liking to this, to this kid. And I think he has a real soft spot because he's this great kind of brave heart warrior, but at the same time has a love of poetry and kind of heart and there's a softness to him. We have a fan question. Do any of the three of you tough guys think you could survive on Arrakis? No way, not me. <laughs> but uh, those uh, steel suits, as they call it, which is our are the suits that they are wearing, the Fremen, in order to survive in the extreme situation of the desert. They were built amazingly well, because once you, you wear them, you were free to move, and there was kind of a cold, fresh air breeze inside the suit. I didn't get that model of suit. I, I missed out on that suit, too. That was definitely, yeah. Come on. Yeah. Mine would hold a bowl of me, like soup. I've never run this much in my life, and uh, then he had me run across the desert, and I was like, I'm not gonna give up, I'm not gonna give up, but inside, I was crying like a little baby. <laughs> uh, we have a fan question here for Jason. Who do you think would win in a fight, Duncan Idaho or Cal Drogo? <laughs> um, <clears throat> Duncan Idaho. <laughs> really? What gives him the edge? Um, those little swords he's got. Sure, okay, that helps. 
All right, please welcome Zendaya and Sharon Duncan Brewster. Thanks so much for being here. Hello. Hello, hello. Happy to be here. Sharon, your character Liet Kynes is a man in the novel. Tell me about the conversations you and Denis had about your taking this role. Well, I think first and foremost, as far as Denis was concerned, it was all about concentrating on the essence of, of this person. He's an integral role. He connects all the dots. He connects the Harkonnens, he connects House of Atreides, he connects the Fremen, planet Arrakis, the Sandworms. This is somebody who understands all these worlds and moves in between each and every one. So I don't think it matters that Kynes in the book is a man. What's important is what Kynes stands for. Zendaya, uh, I have a fan question for you. What most excited you about playing Chani? She's tough, right? She's she's a warrior. She's native to this planet. This is um, this is all she knows. And so this this kind of you know other kid coming in, she's you know not really not really feeling it, you know. Uh, but she sees something in him that is obviously an indicator of what what is to come. For you and and this question also for for Timothy. These are about young people coming into their own in a world where they face impossible odds and the world itself is in many ways broken. Anything you can relate to there <laughs> as a young person growing up in our world right now? Just a little bit. <laughs> I do think there's a possibility of someone seeing this movie um, with the coming of age that Chani and Paul are stepping into, both in uh, a huge uh, obligation of birthright, but also with all 15, 16, 17, 18 year olds go through, which is just that growing up is hard. There is a metaphor and I think a lesson in this movie for everyone. To this to any cast members here, this is, this, is a, this is a jump ball here. What life lessons do you take away from Dune? I think for me, this entire cast and the way that it was shot, it was quite an intense shoot, taught me an incredible amount about myself. And the desert, it's so big. It's basically Mother Nature engulfing you and going, you mean nothing. It takes away the ego. This was a special project in reminding us of the things that get in the way of, of connecting and communal, you know, communal bliss. This film set the bar in how I want to have my career go. Working with Denis and this level of actors, I learned so much every day and I laughed constantly. I felt beautiful in this film. So, Denis, mwah, I love you, buddy. We've been living in our own dystopian future. Why do you think this is the moment for Doom? It's gonna be a mammoth moment when people have the chance to experience something that is not only just exquisite, a feast for the eyes, but is also something that we should take home with us and into our hearts. This film can inspire change. Dune is a movie about the capacity of adaptation because there's a lot of changes that are coming. That's why I think that uh, Dune is more relevant than ever. This whole thing has been a magical experience and to be a part of something that felt this massive but also just feels like another, uh, well, quite literally another world. It is very special. This is a moment we've all been waiting for. Ladies and gentlemen, the world premiere of the feature trailer of Dune. Yeah. Oh. What did you see? Oh. There's a crusade coming. Do you often dream things that happen just as you dream them? Yes. The test is simple. Remove your hand from the box and you die. What's in the box? Pain. You inherit too much power. You have proven you can rule yourself. Now you must learn to rule others. Something none of your ancestors learned. My father rules an entire planet. He's losing it. He's getting a richer one. He'll lose that one too. Ah, my boy! Ah! 
Arrakis is a death trap. Kill them. This is an extermination. They're picking my family off one by one. Let's fight like demons. An animal caught in a trap will gnaw off its own leg to escape. What will you do? I know you. One day, the legend will be born. All of civilization depends on it. The future, I can see it. I must not fear. Fear is the mind killer. My Lord Duke. Where the fear is gone, only I will remain. Thank Warner Brothers and Legendary and Denis and the entire cast. And I want to thank everybody out there for watching this today. And uh, I will see all of you in the theater to see this movie. Thanks so much. Take care, everyone. Love you. Bye, friends. I love you. Bye,